Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new review of Fred Again's 10 Days. Before we go any further, I want to say that this video was indeed sponsored by the Bowtie Gang and Elite Bowtie Society, the channel members of, well, this channel that uh, vote every week on which video they want to see. So if you want to be a part of that voting, you can join today by hitting join below. But let's hop into it. After a trio of actual life records and a collaborative project with Brian Eno, Fred Again is here with a new record, 10 Days. And while this may be a new record and not brand Branded as another addition into the actual life saga, this is very much an actual life style album. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed in that. I don't mind his actual life collection of records, but to me, Fred again really excels in his more dance centric, live focused production. Like it is genuinely shocking how different his live shows are compared to his studio records. It's almost like Fred again has two drastically different personas. And yeah, you've got some more dance centric cuts here, like Places to Be, Peace You Need, and Adore You, but even those tracks are foundationally rooted in that actual life atmosphere. But for the most part, this record is a mellowed out melodic house and field recordings type album. Especially when you bring in some more ethereal vocal features like Emmy Lou, Harris, and Sampha. I think if you were to remove the layer of paint across the whole record that is the field recordings and voice memo style, uh, this record actually would sonically feel more like a mess than a mosaic. At a first glance, one would assume that a lot of the messiness comes from the notion that every second song on this record is an interlude that is often 10 to 15 seconds in length. Fred again tries to use these interludes and explicit field recordings as atmospheric building blocks, yet in practice they act as kind of unnecessary and purposeless movements to this album. But I actually do understand their purpose, and that's to keep the overall cohesive soundscape. I did a listen of this record without any of the interludes, and without their inclusion, you get a feel for how jarring one track can really sound from another. These interludes count each of these 10 days and are both necessary to the overall composition of the record, but simultaneously completely useless to the overall narrative. It really goes to show how Fred Again's music, and this album in particular, is written explicitly for himself. It's as if his studio production is a blog of sorts that we are observing and don't really understand his inner workings of why he does what he does. And that's not a good nor bad thing, but something to keep in mind when listening through his records. There are times where I don't really get what he's trying to do and don't think I can really understand it without having a one-to-one -one heart full conversation about each track, and that's obviously just not possible. Fred again is a brilliant musician and producer, and I do commend the guy for always doing what he wants to do. Because while I'm critical of the overall composition of this record, there are some absolutely stellar tracks on this thing. Glow is a real highlight for me and a testament to what Fred again and company have to offer when they expand upon their ideas and write more so for the audience rather than for themselves. Duskus, Fortet, and Skrillex join in on this cut for a long seven and a half minute blissful progressive and melodic house tune that may be one of Fred Again's best tracks. Other than Skrillex, you can really hear what each individual producer brings to the table with a sound design that I feel is quite dominated by Duskus, actually, which is pretty impressive considering he's the uh, least known artist of the four. The track is natural, yet has a classically electronic feel to it and really explores the space that it provides with its long runtime. Compare that to a track like Just Stand There that has the beginnings of really strong progression, yet runs its course far too quickly. And that track is still 4 minutes and 20 seconds Seconds, which is pretty long by today's musical standards. I'm just honestly quite underwhelmed with how the track just builds and builds and builds as, and has no real kind of concluding movement to it. Glow did progression so masterfully and this track kind of just didn't. Places to Be is another highlight of mine and without a doubt the most dance-centric cut on this record. Taking a more alternative R&B approach to this track, Anderson Pack and Chica join the fray for an upbeat, rapidly moving song. The drum and bass-like beat and 16th note synth runs are complemented by Anderson and Chica's swift vocal cadence. It's a track that is absolutely a fan favorite. And I will say, a majority of the singles here are actually some of the strongest tracks. Adore You and Ten both have these voice recording-like style mixed with his signature melodic house production. They are simple tracks that have a calming atmosphere that will get you up and dancing, just not raving, which is a sort of line that Fred again has been uh, teetering around for years and to great success. It's almost like all of his songs here are made for a chill club. But I'm a little torn on this record in the end. On one hand, I think the tracks are pretty great individually. I think Fred again has maintained the status quo and even given a little extra on tracks like Places to Be and Glow. But as a holistic collection, 10 Days, the album feels a little disjointed and messy at times. The field recording style is starting to get a little stale, and with this being Fred Again's, I would say, spiritual successor to actual life, it's almost as if he's now trapped himself into this one sound. Honestly, I would call this actual life four, and I'm really intrigued to see where Fred Again's going to go after this, where he 
could even go sonically if he's going to go a different direction or just keep this pace for forever. But in the end, I think I'm just going to have to give Fred again the benefit of the doubt here and just kind of forget about those random interludes and stylistic messiness. I think the pros of how good the tracks are individually outweighs the cons of how kind of oddly the whole thing is structured. But with that, I am going to give Fred again's 10 days a bow tied 7. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below on this album. Fred again, 10 days. Is it great? Is it not? Is it somewhere in between? Do you agree with me? Do you not? I'd love to have uh, your opinions in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.